Thank you so much for the kind invitation. I mean, movement of people is obviously something very healthy. We encourage movement of people. Greeks have moved internationally over the decades. Uh, we have been migrants ourselves. We have also welcomed thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people over the years to Greece. So migration is important, and Greece is competing with other countries for skills, for human capital. The challenge Greece faced over the years, though, is when migration is being weaponized and is being weaponized in a complicated geopolitical neighborhood. Over the last seven years, Greece has welcomed over one million people coming from the eastern borders of Greece. This is around 10% of our population. In March 2020, we've seen an organized attempt from Turkey to take advantage of the fact that Europe has a more accommodating policy with regard to migration and challenge our sovereignty. This has become more critical in the current period as we see the rhetoric of Turkey becoming revisionist. There's a lot of topics that are on the agenda today. You want to talk about migration, you want to talk about um, food crisis, you want to talk about energy dilemmas. All things are very well interlinked. And in the end, they drive mass movements of people. I understand the US alone this year is expecting two and a half million arrivals on the southern borders. And when migration ends up in these very, very high numbers, it creates challenges for the societies that are receiving these people. Having said that, there are challenges where we need to act fast. We have seen in our neighborhood the illegal Russian invasion of Ukraine. And obviously, all of the European Union were very closely and strongly standing with Ukraine. I'm very proud that I have been a member of the Council of the European Union configuration on, in, on March 4th, that we decided for the first time in European Union history to completely open our borders, allow all displaced people from Ukraine to come to Europe with no internal borders and offer them immediate access to employment, social benefits and protection. Interesting, we've seen a lot of the people that came to Europe, they were families without husbands. They let the husbands stayed back home to fight. They sent their wives, children, and elder people in the European Union. And when we spoke to the Ukrainian interior minister on that day of March 2022, 20, it was very important to send the message that Europe is here to protect not only Ukraine, but also the families of those Ukrainians fighting in that war. This has shown that Europe is ready to provide solidarity when it's needed. But we need to be cautious when migration is used not because of humanitarian purposes, but as a geopolitical challenge. And Greece, we have been very vocal about it. We do protect our borders, we think, and we consider that to be our obligation under international law. We protect our borders in full respect of fundamental rights, and we will continue to do so. At the same time, I have to say that we have done a lot in Greece over the last few years to improve the conditions offered to those that come to the European Union with new reception centers, with eliminating the backlog on asylum applications, by organizing integration programs, and by protecting what the Prime Minister has been very personally sensitive about, unaccompanied minors. Final point, Europe can do more about providing humanitarian corridors. But we need to do so in an organized way, with rules. I have to tell you, after the collapse of the government in Kabul, Greece was one of the first countries to offer immediate relocation to female leaders, uh, ministers, members of parliament, judges from Afghanistan to Greece. We welcomed, within a very short window of time, 850 people, not in commitments, but in actual arrivals. And I think at that time, we may still be the bigger contributor to humanitarian support from Afghanistan to the European Union to actual committed transfers. So Europe needs to open more humanitarian corridors, but this is my final and strong message. In no way we can allow smugglers to decide who comes and lives in the European Union. Thank you.